Oh god, oh my god, what did I just do? <laughs> we seriously need to talk about this little beast of a camera. We have a lot to talk about right now. Don't you move. I've been a Canon shooter for the last 24 years. Yeah, so shopping another name brand was pretty darn difficult. I looked at every review I can find on Sony, on Nikon, and I came across Fuji. And the one thing that I found was kind of funny was all these camera companies are like cats being thrown into a tub. It's, you know, blah, trying to get out. They're all trying to get ahead. You know, they're all trying to come out with gear with the best tech numbers and values because that's how people are shopping these days, by reviews and five stars. People need to shop for usability. How are you going to use the camera? What is your true purpose in the camera? How large do your file sizes really need to be? What is your usability on your camera? Do you know the holy trinity of photography? Aperture, shutter speed, ISO. If you know those three things, you can literally create anything you want. With any equipment, by the way. The quality of the actual image pixel size does, you know, does have a big effect upon the camera model that you're buying. But any new camera these days is amazing. Any new camera is, is amazing. Even your stinking iPhone is pretty darn good. Still not like the camera I have here, but it'll get you really, really close. Which you guys don't understand that when digital was new, the pixel size that your iPhone is shooting right now was easily double the size that we paid for. And those cameras back then were $8,000. That's true. So if you appreciate photography and you appreciate people who came before us and how fabulous they were and you respect how good they were because film was difficult and they had to know their stuff and they couldn't see the image oh man they're they're amazing which they are that's why they were don't let don't let this technology make you less of an artist okay so anyway that's all i got to say but this fuji camera whoo, wow i keep looking at my images after my sessions are done and i'm blown away by the quality of how this camera works Okay, I wanted a camera that was smaller, was lighter, it had amazing technology. The autofocus is huge for us pros working events. Things don't stop. Things keep moving. You know, the uh, Canon camera that I had, I had the 5D Mark III, you could not, it's not the viewfinder like you have now. This Fuji camera will show you the actual exposure as you change. And that's amazing. Like, I know what I'm getting when I squeeze the trigger. With the older cameras, you didn't know that, you know? You had to squeeze, look at it, adjust, look at it. I can work. Now I can just work. So, this is not a tech review. This is not a bunch of numbers I'm going to throw at you. This is the review I wish I would have found when I was browsing the hundreds of hours, it seems like, on which camera should I buy. And I can absolutely tell you this. No matter what you hear from anybody else, any other review, any other pixel counter, I'm only going to tell you this one time, okay? I use this camera professionally for every single thing I've done in the last six weeks, and I am blown away shocked. Blown away shocked. The usability on this is awesome. The back of the dials are completely customizable. You can tell the buttons on the back what feature you want them to be. Meaning, if you're used to taking pictures and you... You, you want to quickly go to video, now minus the little thing on the top, you can go video, but I have my thumb set, go click, and I can go slow-mo. I'm on slow-mo, I'm on 120 frames per second slow-mo, not even five seconds, not even five seconds. So if somebody tells you anything different, then this camera is um, easy to operate. Once you learn it like any other piece of equipment, you're going to be absolutely fabulous. So I am literally, next week, I'm going to make a video every day on one feature that I love with this camera. So my YouTube channel is more about the whys, 
you know, why to do this? Why should I do that? Why should I be motivated? Why should I learn how to, how to do all the f-stops when the camera can figure out for me? I'm going to show you why. This channel is about the whys. And I can tell you this. This purchase, the Fuji X-T3, I'm shocked. I'm happy. I am totally elated that my dollars spent was well, well worth it. Yeah. So look, let me jump to the computer. I've got to show you some of these images. All of these are from this Fuji. <sighs> So let's jump into the computer, shall we? So look, this is one of my senior sessions that we just did. And when I tell you this thing is really, really awesome at finding the focus, I'm talking even photographing through debris on. Look at that. Is that amazing? For me, that's amazing. I love the fact that I can work fast, and this thing is good at finding the face, especially in low light. Um, this shot was just fun to do. I love this little section. There's a lot of action that I like to make my high school seniors do. You know, even something as simple as walking um, or stopping and twisting. Even then, my computer needs to snap. You see it snap? So look, let's go to low light. Let's jump down to here, okay? I think every camera new these days looks wonderful in the sunlight, but let, let's go to where we actually have to work our cameras, which is in low light. Everybody's concerned about the low light. Two things about the Fuji camera. First of all, when I was shooting my Canon camera, I wouldn't go over 4,000 ISO. That was just a comfortable grain I was happy with. Um, I would have loved to have gone higher, but the grain on the Canon was just more... It was digital-looking grain, not film-looking grain. And that is the absolute difference with the Fuji system. The Fuji camera, when I see the grain, it looks more like film grain than it does digital grain. That's a big difference, because film grain, really fine film grain, gives your image a little texture, and some contrast, and it looks like it's supposed to look. Every image does not have to be so clean, razor sharp, smooth as silk. That's kind of ridiculous. And depending on the scene that you're photographing, you don't maybe you don't want that aspect of it. So Fuji will give you both, but this is what I got to show you. All right, I have an LED light that I had mom, as you can see, right here. Hold. And I was just getting it really close to her face, and uh, apparently it wasn't as bright as I thought it was. As much as I thought it was, man, my little mini aperture light is way better than this. But her dad used to drive the Natchez riverboat, and that was the riverboat coming down the river. So we figured, hey, while the boat's coming down the river, we put it in the background. Let's just do something cute and fun for you. Just something fast, like for dad, you know? A little 5 by 7 he wants in his office. This is the image photographed this is the image tweet now when I say tweet I mean very simple things okay the first thing I do if you want to hit the automatic exposure let it get you there first okay and you're sitting there going oh but I lost all the sky and all yes you can make those changes this is capture one that I work in by the way and what you can do immediately when I have a sky involved, you come to the highlights and the, and the uh, dynamic range, and you lower them. And if you noticed, watch your skin. Nothing changed in the skin. It just messed with the highlights. That's it. This is more of the sky that we were seeing. But we were seeing more color than this. So I wanted to bring that out. So let's up my sat just a little bit. A little more my saturation until her skin. Usually I go crazy. And when I see her skin is orange, then back down slow, back down slow, back down slow, back down to where she looks like she's gray again. I call it gray. Um, and then come up a smidge more. Boom. So that winds up being plus 38. Okay? And off the bat, you can look at, this is the image before, but this is the image before it's tweaked. This is the image after we just did that. That's it. So look, before I get off the computer, I want to show you this. This image here. See the specs? ISO 4000, 125 at 1 
This is my 16 millimeter lens. I have a whole video coming out for just this 16 mil 1.4. Oh my God, is that a beast of a lens? Complete, utterly beast. This is at 4,000 ISO, okay? Look at this. That's cray cray. Look at the grain right around here. The grain that's in the shadows, this looks more like how film used to look rather than that extreme digital noise that we seem to be getting. I mean, look at this. This is at 4,000 ISO. What about this guy? You see that real fine? It, that's, that's fine grain. You know? There's a little static in there, but Jesus, look how far I'm zooming in to pixel find <laughs> the grain for you. It's not even crazy obvious. I mean, this is an absolutely beautiful image of the back of this courtyard. You can pause this, go to, put, put your face to the screen and go look at that. That's 4,000 at 1.4. Pretty darn amazing, huh? So if you're like me and you're a Canon shooter and you were looking at making a move and you didn't want to do Sony, you weren't really thrilled with Nikon, all I can say is rent something before you buy it because it's so cheap these days to go to one of those companies online like Borrow Lenses or Lens Rentals and rent a camera you think you want to purchase. And I guarantee you, man, if you get this X-T3, you're gonna drool when you get it. The autofocus helps me so much. That's one big reason why I wanted a new camera with better technology. Find the focus, man. Can I turn off the face detection and just have my normal, you know, square that I can put all around the face? Yep, you can do that too. All I can say is thank you, Fuji Film, for making such an awesome camera. Thank you. And my load has gotten much, much lighter. I am barely fatigued after seven hours of work. Seriously, I do not hurt the way I used to hurt. And the fact that I'm coming home looking at 2,000 plus wedding images, if I shot 2,500 images, 2,400 and something of them are in focus. They are. So I hope this helps you make a decision or at least go rent this thing and judge for yourself. I've worked this camera on every job I've had, every kind of job I've had, and I have not been disappointed yet. Next week, I'm going to do individual aspects of the camera and the usability, and that's how I'm going to pair it. I'm going to show you the 16mm lens with how I use it and why. I'm going to show you how I set up the back of my camera, because it's how I use my camera. You'll see why we do what we do. So thanks for being here on the channel. If you're brand new, my subs will be happy to show you around. The first thing they're going to show you is to scroll down to the page and hit that red sub. But most importantly, we're all about leaving comments in the comment section because your voice is not heard if you don't speak. All right, you guys, till next video. See y'all next time. Stay focused.